Hello again, I am Blunty. I'm in Los Angeles on the invite of the folks at AMD because they're showing off their two next big deal products ready for launch. The first is Threadripper, the other one is the long-awaited Gamer Focus GPU from their new Vega architecture, the Radeon RX Vega. I'll be digging into both these products in proper detail with reviews, benchmarks, and my usual practical real-world focus tests as soon as I can. But for now, let's bounce across the top of the important bits of Threadripper. Following on, of course, from the last several months of launches with Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 3 rolling out, and frankly impressing across the board with pretty much every reviewer and influencer and whatever that gave them a go, giving them a big old thumbs up. With their very enticing bang-for-buck performance versus value proposition, now here comes the big boy of the pack. Here comes Threadripper, AMD's HEDT chip, or high-end desktop CPU. But to be frank, most of you probably won't need one. Many of you will probably want one though, because let's face it, it's in our tech head nature to feel a deep and burning want for the very best that's available out there. And when it comes to the Ryzen chips, the Threadripper is the best of the best. At least as far as the chips that are aimed at, you know, regular users go. Threadripper is aimed at users with heavy multitasking dense workloads, all the way from developers through to heavy content creators, and while it's not aimed at the average gamer, those of us who do heavily multitask while gaming, well, it's going to make a big impact. One remarkable live demo we were shown was Threadripper against one of Intel's best, playing a game, in this case Hitman, while live streaming the game with OBS, while also recording the gameplay locally at a high bit rate to an SSD, and compressing another video previously recorded in the background to a different drive. Of course, Threadripper, being festooned with far more cores and threads and a bewildering amount of I.O. bandwidth, as you may imagine, did all this basically flawlessly. With the game running well above 60 FPS and a 1080p 60 frames per second stream almost locked right there and everything else under it running without issue, while the Intel rig... Well, the Intel rig choked on the brutal workload, to be frank, leaving the game barely playable at 30-something FPS. I even saw it drop down into the 20s from time to time, for crying out loud, with a ton of stuttering even when it was above 30, and the stream suffering all kinds of frame rate hitches and hiccups as well. Now, sure, that's a pretty edge-case scenario, but it is a real thing that real people are doing right now at the high end of gaming content creation. And yes, I've tried to do similar workloads like that without much success, by the way, on my top-end i7. So I, personally, am really looking forward to seeing what Threadripper does in my own home. Threadripper launches in three variants, the 1950X at the top, 16 cores, 32 threads, and just under a grand. Below that is the 1920X, 12 cores, 24 threads at $799. And a newly revealed 8-core, 16-thread variant at a price that pulled a collective gasp from the crowd at $549. They call it the 1900X. Now, at first glance, it may seem a bit odd to hamstring the Threadripper down to just 8 cores. But the thing is, every other aspect of the Threadripper feature set remains. They're not doing like Intel. They're not sort of chopping out bits and pieces of features as you go down the range here. You still get everything else. In particular, of course, the massive amount of PCIe lanes and big, fat I.O. options. So while not everyone will necessarily need or want the huge multi-core setup of the bigger brother models, it's cool to have an option at a super aggressive price point that gets you everything else awesome about the platform. As we already know, the package size of the Threadripper chip is extraordinarily large too, which could cause some issues, at least in the short term, when it comes to choices of compatible coolers. And I have already spoken to at least one well-known brand behind some excellent AIO coolers that I like very much, and they do have bespoke Threadripper-ready, Threadripper-compatible coolers coming pretty soon. But in the meantime, AMD have been smart enough to include an adapter bracket right in the box with every single Threadripper CPU that will make several of the most common water blocks out there usable on Threadripper. They even give you a tool for fitting it. AMD also make promises that the silicon they're sliming into every one of Threadripper's humongous CPU packages will be their best of the best of the best, meaning that we should expect some really good overclocking performance from them too. 
Now, we already know that the other Ryzen chips don't overclock especially dramatically. I mean, they all overclock to at least some extent, but not dramatically so. But by way of demonstration on Threadripper, they did have some live extreme overclocking going on with the whole liquid nitro thing. Now, I'm not sure how representative this will be in the real world. They were using reference boards and surely carefully hand-picked CPUs, but I did hear the number 5.1 GHz at one point, and the Cinebench benchmark number I caught at another point was a very, very, very large number. Then again, with or without an extreme overclock, though, Threadripper will certainly make a mockery of everything else when it comes to the highly multicore reliant benchmarks like Cinebench. When it comes to straight gaming, much like the consumer level tiers of Ryzen, we should expect that Intel will have a slight edge, all other things being equal, thanks to their higher instruction per clock performance. And again, if you're after a Threadripper for a pure gaming rig, you are spending your money in the wrong place, quite frankly. You are absolutely going to be better off with the Ryzen 7 if what you want is a pure gaming machine. But when it comes to content creators, streamers, YouTubers, and all other types of intensive multitasking workloads that go along beside gaming, expect Threadripper to give Intel quite a lot to worry about. It is shaping up to be an absolute monster when it comes to that stuff, especially when you start doing the price to performance math. But again, there's what these slides say up on the projector screen, and there's what happens in the real world. So hang tight, pick and poke at the numbers and charts all you like, but as far as verdicts go, wait until I and, of course, my various peers and compatriots start throwing real workloads at these things at our own desks, in our own rigs, and then we'll see what's what. On that note, if there is a particular configuration of workloads you'd be interested in seeing tried, go ahead and let me know in the down below area. But thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.